Welcome back to Vepper 12 All Day. Thank you once again for tuning in and supporting the channel. I haven't made a video in a while. I've been uh, pretty swamped with work in my personal life, but I really appreciate all your unwavering support. In the meantime, I've been getting some great comments, subscriptions, uh, feedback from people all over the world, uh, in Russia, here in the States, Greece, and it's very exciting. The Vepper 12 Nation is growing. Um, these guns are starting to get a lot more attention. People are starting to win competitions with these guns. And um, I'm here with another video, uh, detailed install, about two different products that are available from my wonderful sponsor at 4range.com. Uh, please do check out 4range. Look for links in the video description, product links, discount codes. Um, he's a great retailer, bringing you products that are hard to find for a great price with great customer service. So two products that are available from 4range. The Carolina Shooter Supply Scout Mount, which we're going to install today, as well as the Ronin's Grips Quick Takedown Pin for the top cover. So your question might be, um, why would you want to transition to a Scout Mount? So I'm working on my friend's gun today, and uh, so far I've been using this gun in my competitions, doing pretty well with it while my personal gun is out being worked on by Dissonant Arms. Um, so a top cover Picatinny rail uh, system will be okay for most applications on this gun. But having talked to uh, many top level competitors, guys that shoot major matches with these guns, have a lot on the line, um, this could cost you um, a stage or an entire match because Plain and simple, when you open and close this top cover, you are going to lose your zero when it comes to slug trajectories out to 40 and 50 yards. It's going to happen. And uh, I just talk, talked to a guy who competed in the, uh, the Nordic Vortex Trigun competition this past weekend, and he had a stage meltdown, which uh, cost him 100 seconds in penalties because he lost his zero. He was using the top cover uh, mounted system. He still took second place, which is amazing. But um, uh, this can be easily solved by transitioning to a, to a scout mount. Now, other guys you'll see like Ipsic competitors in Russia, uh, they use forward barrel mounts. I'm not into that. A lot of guys aren't into that. Uh, here stateside, I see a lot of people going to the scout mount. So today we're going to install that for you from start to finish and show you what it's all about. Stay tuned. Before you start working on your gun, make sure it's unloaded. Always follow the rules of gun safety when handling a gun or working on it or shooting on it. Be safe and stay safe. Thank you. So we're going to do the harder part first, which is to remove this railed uh, dust cover. So this right here is the dust cover pin that we're going to uh, remove. It's pretty hardy. I mean, I'd say it's one of the harder pins to remove on this gun. Um, definitely not up there with the worst. But we're going to show you how it's done. So as you can see, you have this, uh, if I can get my camera to focus, you yeah, saw it on the other side, these two dimples. They're on both sides. It's the staking that holds that pin in. And really, in, in terms of this pin, it's almost impossible to tell which side it was driven in from. And um, I really don't think it matters which side you drive the, the pin out from. Some guys say uh, right to left uh, is standard. Um, but I found that to not be the case with certain pins on this gun. So I'm going to say it doesn't matter. We're going to show you how to uh, strap this bad boy up and chalk it up uh, with some wood blocks and some ratchet straps to uh, get that pin moving. So this is what it looks like on my workbench here. Uh, this block has some grooves etched into it. That's what I use for my barrel vise. Here in my little shop. So when you lay it with some blocks behind it, it's it's actually pretty steady. You know, this is tough because um, you have such an irregular surface on both sides of the gun here. But as I lay it here, uh, I think that if we just lock it down with some ratchet straps, that we're going to be good to go. And uh, we'll get it moving for you. All right, now we done put the ratchets on it. And... Uh, Tell you what, that uh, that sucker ain't pretty much going nowhere. So we're gonna get to work now. If you've seen any of my other videos, you can pretty much guess how this is going to go. First, 
we are going to center punch that pin then using a small drill bit we're going to pre-drill a little purchase point for a punch Just a little bit, just a little divot. And then we're gonna move on to a little stubby punch to get the pin moving. And you can tell when that pin starts moving when uh, the noise, the pitch changes as you strike it. And I can already tell it's moving out of there. So then you move on to your uh, appropriately sized punch, the longer one. Okay. It's moving out of there. You just got to be careful as you move from um, the pin channel of the rear sight block into the actual dust cover so you're not beaten against the side of the dust cover just like any other uh, any other pin here that goes through multiple channels. I'm going to switch to a smaller uh, tapered punch for a second here. And I'm almost out of room behind the gun, which is a good thing. That pin's almost out. Okay. I'm pretty much out. I'm going to uh, free the vapor from this contraption and get the pin the rest of the way out of there. So there she is. You can see the pin sticking out of there. Okay. And now I'm probably just going to layer off the edge of that um, side of that piece of wood and just kind of hold it and uh, maybe with a knee and get the pin the rest of the way out. And there you have it. That pins out. Okay. And the dust cover is free. Alright, so you've now removed the uh, top dust cover off the Viper 12. What's the big deal about that? If you install your uh, scout mount uh, here in this rear sight leaf, which we're going to get to in a second, uh, the Picatinny is going to stick back about half an inch so had you not removed the dust cover it's only going to let you open the dust cover then um, a very short distance um, and it's going to make a takedown of your gun a big pain in the ass so that's why we did that to install this Ronin's grip quick takedown pin uh, it's pretty simple it's just like a grenade pin with a little ball detent and you just have to align the dust cover the Picatinny rail with its pin channel and from either side just give it a little wiggle in there and uh, that's it. You now have it on a on a quick disconnect. Next we're going to remove the rear sight leaf. Okay this takes a little bit of patience uh, a little bit of black magic and uh, a little bit of luck. So as you can see maybe 
you've never removed a rear sight leaf, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, you have this leaf spring, which creates a lot of tension and holds the rear sight leaf in place. You can flip it all the way forward like that. When you flip it at 90 degrees right there, you can see that its little lugs are hanging out in this top notch. You want to depress the leaf spring in such a manner that those lugs are free to move down into this bottom circle, which is bigger, and has a little ramp that allows the sight leaf to just spring on out of there like uh, you know, a little Russian slip and slide. Okay, so we're gonna achieve all that with a screwdriver and um, possibly some cursing. So here we go. We're gonna flip it to 90 and when you look directly down, let's flip to 90, the little end, the little tongue part of that leaf spring will be exposed more so than when you have it laying flat. When it's laying flat, you can barely see the end of the leaf spring. Then you flip it to 90. Okay? Then you plunge that flat blade screwdriver in there. And you press. And then you slowly press on the top of the leaf spring. And then you try to wedge it in there. Okay? And bam! Wow, that was a lot easier than the first time I did it. But um, yeah, that's pretty much how you do that. I hope that I was able to uh, capture that good enough for you on video for you to understand what I did. After that, you grab your set of needle nose pliers, and then you grab that leaf spring, and of course, why why would it be easy? Get that. Yo, try a match. Sabaka. There you go. That's out of there. All right, so now you are primed and ready to install that scout mount. The Carolina Shooter Supply scout mount comes prepackaged with all the Allen wrenches you will need and basically operates on three set screws and these little Allen bolts that hold it in from the side. And we're going to show you how to install that. First, Remove the two Allen bolts with the larger of the two uh, Allen keys and you're going to lay those bolts to the side in your work area. And then you can see how the scout mount just kind of dovetails in there. Okay? And you're going to install those from either side. So what I've done is I've replaced the Allen head bolts on either side and I cranked them down semi-tight, but I haven't loctited them yet. So the process is going to be, we're going to uh, dial in the set screws from the top, uh, then we're gonna achieve our fit that way, uh, get it nice and tight so that there's no play, and then we're going to take out um, the bolts one at a time, loctite those, then go ahead one at a time, loctite our set screws. And that's basically how it's done. So you're gonna start off Take your small Allen wrench and with the rear set screw, you're going to dial it in. Uh, once you start seeing it push off the sight block, basically once it contacts the sight block, you're pretty much done with that one. Then you move on to the two in the front and you go righty tighty screw them in until they contact the rear sight block. Okay, you're gonna make gentle little fine adjustments until you feel like all three of those are kind of making a nice engagement onto that block. Feels pretty solid. So now you're going to secure your 
Allen head bolts in, and I think this is a great time to use red Loctite. Um, it's going to keep it from moving around, and contrary to popular belief, red Loctite is not permanent. It just requires some heat to break it down and disengage it, which is super easy to do with a soldering iron. So I'm going to use the red. So I'm going to take out one Allen bolt at a time. A little dab of the red. And I'm going to put that back in. And this time I am going to torque it down. Not crazy, but you know, like I mean it. And I'm going to do the same thing from the other side. Then I'm going to do the same with my three set screws. I'm going to remove the rear one. And you can see it's pretty long. So I'm going to dab that up pretty good. Let it soak in. Okay, and then reinstall. Remember, be careful, go as slow as you need to, don't cross thread, don't strip, or else you are buying a new part at that point. Okay, and as I feel my engagement, give it a good Snuggaroo, like I mean it. So without boring you to death, this is your finished product with everything tightened down and Loctited. So you want that rear set screw to be in that kind of uh, Goldilocks zone where it's allowing these uh, front set screws to come down um, to the point where it's not tilting one way or the other. And it actually does look pretty nice and straight on the Bepper 12. So we're going to finish up the video by reinstalling the dust cover and putting an EOTech on there. So there you have it. Everything is back together and the EOTech is installed. Just a couple uh, final thoughts, odds and ends. Uh, earlier in the video, I did say that you could install a quick takedown lever, the pin, um, from either side. And that was incorrect. We all know I'm good for one good screw up per video and that was it. You definitely don't want it on the right side with the charging handle going back and forth. That would get snagged up on that. So do install a quick takedown on the left side. So the value of that is that when you have your uh, scout mount installed and the sight kind of sticking out over, if you didn't have the quick takedown, it would only allow you to lift the dust cover about that much. Okay, with the quick takedown, you can take it off, get it out of there, do a takedown, um, you know, check the action if you need to, and then get it right back on there, okay? So if you're watching the video, it looks like the, the optic is sitting a little bit high, but I've been rocking the scout mount for over a year, and I love it. You know, I like where it puts the optic. It lets you get a good natural position, puts the gun right in your shoulder pocket, okay? Um, your next step up from this is going to be a section of Picatinny rail that you can weld inside the rear sight leaf yourself if you want to get that ultra low profile. That's what some of the competitors are doing. Um, that's going to be a more advanced uh, or gunsmith job. Um, for about $50 in parts, and easy labor, you know, this install came together real nice today. I think it is well worth it um, to go ahead and do this upgrade with parts available from 4range.com. I really do like the EOTech on there. And uh, that's, that's pretty much going to be about it for our video today. Uh, thanks again for watching. 
And please do like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our sponsors. Uh, support them. Interact with them. Um, all it's going to do is help us, help the channel, help the VEP12 Nation. And uh, keep an eye out for those discounts, promotions. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.